Hello, my friends of the Psychedelic Renaissance, it's Tom Hatzis, your Psychedelic Historian, and these are the strange, unknown, or otherwise forgotten psychedelics of the ancient world. It seems as if antiquity was just full of mind-manifesting plants. There were, of course, the more familiar options like cannabis, opium, mandrake, and henbane, but there are also a number of references to other psychoactives that, well, we just don't know what the hell they were. Other times, a source might reference a plant that we today don't consider psychoactive at all, and yet the source will speak of it in entheogenic terms. Still other times, we know that a psychoactive or psychedelic or whatever kind of plant or fungus was in play, but the source doesn't say what it actually was. We're going to unpack all of it. But before we get started, if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing to the Psychedelic Historian YouTube page, and make sure you hit that little bell icon so that you're notified every time I post a new video. Also, it'd be great to link up with you on Instagram. Please find me at Psychedelic Historian. And we do have a private Facebook group, the Sanctum Psychedelia group, where we talk about all things wild and weird. We'd love to have you join that conversation. But for now, let's delve deeply into the mysterious world of unknown psychedelics from ancient civilizations. Let's begin by exploring some plants that we know today to be innocuous, but were written about as having some kind of entheogenic property in our ancient sources. Our first example lands us in the first century of the Common Era. Plutarch writes about a certain kind of ivy that the Maenads, or those votive worshippers of Dionysus, ate. Not altogether without plausibility, there are they who assert that ivy, possessing as it does an exciting and distracting breath of madness, deranges persons and agitates them, and in general brings on a wineless drunkenness and joyousness in those that are precariously disposed towards spiritual exaltation. Wineless drunkenness? We don't know of any kind of ivy that has any kind of psychoactive properties to it, and yet Plutarch describes this ivy as being used as an entheogen by the Maenads. Now it could be that there once existed some kind of psychoactive ivy that people used for entheogenic purposes, and it was simply over-harvested or went extinct or... I mean, really, we just don't know. In any event, Plutarch does offer pretty strong evidence that some kind of psychoactive ivy did exist in the ancient world. But it wasn't just ivy. Certain forms of ancient frankincense were also said to have some kind of mind-manifesting properties to them. For example, a Christian writer named Tatian wrote of certain women who lose their senses by the fumes of frankincense. In medical literature, the physician Dioscortus remarks on the potency of Assyrian frankincense. The historian George Luck, in his masterpiece Arcana Mundi, tells us, No two kinds of frankincense have exactly the same effect. There are many varieties, coming from different regions along the ancient incense route, and some of the more potent ones may not be available anymore. Other times, an ancient source will tell us that a psychoactive was being used, but they don't tell us what it was. One rather famous example stars the infamous Roman emperor Caligula. The Roman historian Suetonius tells us that after drinking some kind of psychedelic magic potion, the emperor was terrorized by outlandish apparitions, imagining that he was holding conversation with a vision of the sea. However, he doesn't tell us what the fuck was in that potion that would cause such a visionary reaction. A less famous example is found in the pseudo-Plutarch text De Fluis, or On Rivers. The author writes how the Thracians would worship their goddess Ceres by throwing some unidentified plant onto a large fire. The Thracians would hold their heads over the smoke and snuff it up into their nostrils, till at last they fall into a profound sleep. The author writes that the Thracians burned the tops of these plants. Now, this could mean cannabis buds, or opium bulbs, or some other entheogenic plant. We simply don't know. The third and final category I'd like to unpack is somewhat ironic, in that we actually do know the names of these plants, or fungi, but we don't know what the writer's actually referring to because the specific name that they use hasn't been used in hundreds, if not thousands, of years. 
The most famous example of this category is definitely Nepenthe, which appears in Book 4 of Homer's Odyssey. In one scene, Helen, the daughter of Zeus, mixes Nepenthe into everybody's wine to bring forgetfulness of every sorrow. In fact, the word Nepenthe literally means not sorrow, from the Greek ne, a prefix meaning not, and penthos, meaning grief or sorrow. It was even rumored by Diodorus of Sicily that Homer himself had a taste for Nepenthe. And yet, we have no idea what Nepenthe was. While cannabis and opium are often cited as the most likely candidates for Nepenthe, the situation is pretty complicated. Here's why. First, Homer's Odyssey is a work of fiction. Now, that doesn't automatically mean that Nepenthe was fictional, because just take cannabis as an example. It appears in works of fiction like movies and books, and it is all too real. Therefore, it seems odd that Homer wouldn't just refer to Nepenthe as either opium or cannabis. So then why does he choose the obscure word Nepenthe? There are at least two reasons that I can think of. First, perhaps in Homer's day, the word Nepenthe wasn't obscure at all. So maybe Homer is actually using the word that his audience would recognize. Which sucks for us, because we don't recognize it at all. Second, it's also possible that Homer was using not a popular name for a psychoactive substance, but a local name for a psychoactive substance. Much the same way the Greek geographer Pausanias uses the local name Asterion in lieu of the more popular name Cannabis. Nepenthe aside, so far as concerns our third category, Pliny the Elder's natural history is an indispensable source of lost, forgotten, or unknown psychoactives of the ancient world. For example, he speaks of Theangelus, a plant that can be found from Lebanon in the Middle East to Crete in Greece and all over the expanse of Persia. And yet, despite its widespread distribution, we have no idea what Theangelus was. We do know, however, that the Magi drank it to gain power over the divine. Pliny also wrote of Thalassigal, which caused those who ate or drank it to rave while weird visions beset their minds. And just like Theangelis, we have no idea what Thalassigal was. Pliny also wrote of recreational substances like Gelatophilus from Bactria and Hestiateris of Persia, both of which caused laughter and merriment. And have you ever heard of Gelatophilus and Hestiatarius? Yeah, me neither. We have no idea what the hell he was talking about. Pliny even writes of psychedelic plants that were used to torture blasphemers. In Ethiopia, authorities employed something called Ophiusa. So strong were the terrible visions of threatening serpents that the person forced to drink Ophiusa normally committed suicide just to escape the torment. Criminals in India were made to swallow Icomenus to similar effect. On this last substance, Icomenus, I'd like to employ a little bit of Latin etymology to see if we can't figure out what Pliny was talking about. Let's break this word down into its base elements. Akai can be traced through Old French and Middle English to the Latin apium, which means celery. Menace can be traced back similarly, through the Old French manus and the Latin minax, meaning threat. Incidentally, we get our modern word menace from the Latin minax. So Achmenus might mean the threatening, or more accurately, the frightening celery. Well, my friends, that's all I have for you this time, and like always, I'd love to thank you for stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a share, and subscribe to the Psychedelic Historian YouTube page for more content just like it. Also, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think some of these strange and bizarre substances from the ancient world were? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. Likewise, if I missed any or you know of some other unknown psychedelic of the ancient world that I totally forgot about, please let me know about it. As I hope this video has shown, psychedelia went far beyond the usual suspects in the ancient world, those being cannabis, opium, mandrake, and henbane. 
Well, until we meet again, I'm Tom Hatzis, your psychedelic historian, reminding you that you free your mind by using your brain. Peace.